So today is an important day for people who want to vote in the state of Oregon. It's the registration deadline and KGW's Brian Clerkley joining us live this morning with more on what we all need to know. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Nina. And if you're new to the state of Oregon, then you need to register to vote today, according to the director of elections here in Multnomah County. Now, if you don't have an Oregon driver's license yet, you need to register on a paper form. You can download that off the county's website, pick one up at the library, or go to one of the two county election offices in Southeast Portland or downtown Gresham. Those offices will be open until seven tonight. Director of Elections Tim Scott says there could be long lines today. Scott says it's important for people to check their registration and make sure all their information is up to date. In case you moved or something even as simple as adding or removing a PO box can sometimes trip things up with the mail delivery process. So we're encouraging people to go to Oregon Votes Dot gov and that's the Secretary of State's elections website and log into my vote and uh, you'll be able to look at your registration details. So here are the other dates you need to know. Ballots start mailing out tomorrow. Last date the last day to mail in your ballot is October 27th, and election day is November 3rd. Your ballot must be mailed in or dropped off by 8 p.m. on November 3rd to be counted for the election. And for Washington, you have a little bit more time to register to vote. That deadline is October 26th. Back to you guys. All right, Brian Clerkley live for us this morning. Thank you. And we're making it really easy for you to register. If you just text us the word vote to that number on your screen, 503-226-5088, we will text you back a link to the websites for Oregon and Washington. You can also find our voter's guide on KGW.com. Caught on camera, a man stealing a Joe Biden Kamala Harris sign from a home in orchards. And people in Clark County say this is happening far too often to both Democrats and Republicans. The owners of that home in orchard said that they had two signs stolen in less than a week. Also in East Vancouver, neighbors say somebody took several Biden Harris signs from their yards in Fairway Village. Neighbors even found notes on their doors criticizing their political views. I had a sign and it was taken and it upset me very much. have never been a political person, so this is new for me this year. So I was just surprised, but I guess that's the climate these days. The women bought new signs from the Clark County Democrats at 20 bucks a pop. Chair John Oberg estimates 50 to 75 people have come by in the last month mm. to replace their stolen signs. Mm. I love this. He suggests that <clears throat> we do what we learned in kindergarten and leave everybody's <laughs> signs alone. Right hands to yourself, people. But this is not a partisan issue. Clark County Republicans say they're dealing with theft as well. Co-office manager Anna Miller estimates two to three people come by a day for replacement signs. That is roughly the same number as Democrats. In Washington, by the way, stealing a political sign is a misdemeanor. Well, in just about an hour, the second day of confirmation hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett will get underway. That's right. During the first day of confirmation hearings yesterday, Barrett said she plans to stick to the words of the Constitution. But courts are not designed to solve every problem or right every wrong in our public life. Supreme Court vacancy. One concern that Democrats have voiced is how six conservative justices on the Supreme Court might rule on the upcoming challenge to the Affordable Care Act. Meanwhile, Republicans say too much is being made about the fact that Barrett is a devout Catholic. They are attacking you as a mom and a woman of faith because they cannot attack your qualifications. By replacing Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg with someone who will undo her legacy, President Trump is attempting to roll back Americans' rights for decades to come. Republicans believe they have the votes to confirm Barrett before Election Day. Democrats hope to pressure Judge Barrett to recuse herself from any Supreme Court cases involving President Trump.
Portland city leaders are condemning weekend protests that damaged downtown buildings. So Sunday night, people used cars to pull down large statues of Theodore Roosevelt on horseback and another of Abraham Lincoln. They fired bullets into a restaurant and smashed windows and tried to light fires inside the Oregon Historical Society. The crowd also stole a quilt from the lobby made by black women for Oregon's bicentennial. It was found but it has been damaged. And we as indigenous people stand with the Black Lives Matter movement, and that's what this moment is about. The fact that someone would hijack indigenous people's day to cause more violence is not appropriate. They are not engaged in any activity that has any relationship whatsoever to racial justice or equity. They are purely engaged in violence and criminal destruction for the sake of violence and criminal destruction. Three people were arrested Sunday. Repairs to the Oregon Historical Society are estimated at more than $25,000. We've also directed the FBI to immediately investigate the destruction of the Teddy Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln statues in Portland and to prosecute the offenders to the fullest extent of federal law. That's President Trump talking about the about Portland at a rally in Florida last night, calling on the FBI to get involved. So as you just mentioned, Nina, three people have been arrested since Sunday for the damage that was caused downtown that night. We had a viewer that wrote in and asked us where those three were from. So we found out two of them are actually Portland residents, but the third is from Pasco, Washington. That guy right there, his name is Brandon Bartels, and he's accused of driving a van that was used to pull down the Theodore Roosevelt statue. We also found out that Bartels was arrested at a protest in Kenosha, Washington, uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, that is, sorry, Kenosha, Wisconsin, back in August. Back then, he was accused of violating the curfew that was in place after a protest erupted following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. The people at Sunday's protest say it was in support of indigenous people. But that has some people questioning why the Lincoln and Roosevelt statues were targeted. Our Kristen Severance is here with the Verify. We don't know why protesters targeted the statues, but we can verify historical facts surrounding both presidents. Columbus Day is a legal holiday commemorating the arrival of Christopher Columbus to the Americas in 1492. It's celebrated by some states on the second Monday of October. Other states, including Oregon, since 2017, now commemorate the day as Indigenous Peoples Day, a day to recognize the mistreatment of Native populations after the arrival of Columbus. Protesters called Sunday the, quote, Indigenous Peoples Day of Rage. 200 people marched downtown. Some destroyed statues in Portland, including the Theodore Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln statues in the South Park blocks, both in Portland since the 1920s. The Lincoln statue had Dakota 38 spray painted on its base, referencing the 38 Dakota men executed in 1862. According to historians, Lincoln approved the hanging of 38 Dakota men after a violent conflict with white settlers in Minnesota. He later commuted the sentences of 265 others. According to historians, Roosevelt said hostile and derogatory things about Native Americans, including, quote, I don't go so far as to think that the only good Indians are dead Indians, but I believe nine out of every ten are. And he pushed policies, including the allotment system, where Native American land was allotted to those who became U.S. citizens first and white settlers second. Do you have something you want us to verify? Let us know. Email us at verify at kgw.com. It's 10 minutes after 5 on your Tuesday morning, and that is a live picture from Southeast Portland over in the Selwood area. Some of the food carts there. It is a cute little area. I used to live over that way. I'm getting a little homesick.